Grace and peace to you on this Lord's Day, this World Communion Sunday. Uh, I'm Liv McGregor Simmons. I'm Parish Associate at Mount Pleasant Presbyterian Church, and I'm glad to be with you once again. Uh, today we will be celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, so I'm going to invite you, if you haven't done this already, to gather your elements and put them on your kitchen counter, your kitchen table, your dining room table, uh, your coffee table, wherever you may be, so that when we come to that point in our worship service, uh, you'll be able to share the bread and the cup with uh, your uh, fellow church members as well as our brothers and sisters around the world. Uh, we're going to start with the children's sermon this morning, and I am so, so pleased and grateful to Ellie and Liam who have come to share the children's sermon with us. So if Ellie and Liam, if you'll come with us, and I hope there's some children at home who are also uh, participating in the children's sermon. So just come and stand right here in front of the, you wanna stand here in front of the communion table this today. Come over here, right over, well, you can come stand beside me, it'd be great. Good. That's just as good. We aren't quite six, let me see if I could put my airplane arms out here, okay? Does that sound good? All right, so today we're going to be celebrating what we call the Sacrament of the Lord's Supper or Communion. And on this day, all over the world, brothers and sisters, Christian brothers and sisters, are taking time to remember Jesus, to remember how the night before he died, he took some bread and he shared that with his friends and then he took some, a cup and it was filled with wine and he shared that with friends and he said, whenever you do that, I want you to do that and remember me. So that's what we're doing. And today we're also remembering people all over the world. You know, one of the neat things is all around the world, we have different kinds of bread. Have you ever thought about that? So I have brought some bread here that's from different parts of the world. I'm gonna see maybe if you know where some of this bread might have come from. Here's one kind of bread. Have you seen this kind of bread before? It's a tortilla. Mm -hmm. Right, yes, it's a, it's a tortilla. So tortillas are, are um, eaten in many places, but um, probably one of the places that's closest to us that we know about is what? What country? When you go out and you order a tortilla, what kind of restaurant are you in? You know? A Mexican restaurant probably, right? So in Mexico, so our Christian brothers and sisters in Mexico, as they celebrate communion today, they're probably using a tortilla. So this is another kind of bread. And we call this pita bread. And the place in the world where this is um, uh, eaten is in the Middle East. Um, so countries like uh, Palestine um, and Lebanon, places like that, they would be eating this kind of bread. And this actually is probably the kind of bread that Jesus ate because he was from that part of the world. And so when he uh, had that meal with his friends, he probably had this kind of bread. And have you ever seen any bread like this? This is called naan. So, the, so this comes from uh, India. Um, so over in Asia, this is the kind of bread probably that our Indian brothers and sisters are using today. And this bread, what kind of bread is that? Um, I think you know, right? And when I say it, you're gonna remember it. French bread, it's a baguette. And so in France and Europe, they may be eating this today. So in a, in a few moments, I'm going to be sharing this bread and we'll be eating this, but um, if you would like, I can, you can take, I'm gonna, let, I, I touched some of these, so probably those aren't the best ones for you to take, but if you wanna take one of these other ones yourself and made a, make a sandwich with it when you get home, you can do that. Would you like to do that? And then we'll have a prayer together. Go ahead and choose one. You wanna take a big one? All right, I'll tell you what, let me, let me break it in half and then you can take half of it home. Okay, because I was actually going to use this in the community. Okay? All right, 
There you go, Liam. What about you? You want a tortilla? Okay. Why don't you go ahead and pick that up then? All right. There you go. All right, let's have a prayer together, okay? Gracious God, as we come to this table today, we are thinking about our brothers and sisters in France and in the Middle East, in Central America, in Mexico, in India, Asia, and we ask that your blessing be felt and that you draw us together in peace. Amen. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. Well, great morning. <laughs> Lesson this morning is Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 through 9. Let us pray. Holy Spirit come, illumine these ancient words that they may become your word to us today. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior, the Prince of Peace. Amen. This morning, I would like to invite you to sit beside the prophet, poet Isaiah, and to join him in imagining a new world. In the beginning of this reading, Isaiah is imagining a forest, or what was once a forest. It was a forest until the mighty Assyrian army had sliced through it and made it a wasteland, leaving a bloody trail of devastation behind him. And so now there are branches lying helter-skelter all over the area like toothpicks that have been accidentally spilled on the kitchen floor. Stumps scab the landscape. Everything is eerily quiet. And it is Isaiah's perspective that the Lord has caused all of this, making good on a promise that was voiced a few verses earlier in chapter 10 of Isaiah in which the Lord said that it was really important that the people continue in righteousness and faith, but yet they had not. And so in the midst of this quiet, we hear a small sound, ruach, ruach. It is that wonderful Hebrew word that is translated in various places as wind, breath, spirit. The Ruach moves across the countryside and we begin to see the slightest hints of new life amid all this devastation. A tiny shoot, a sprig, reaches up out of one of those dead stumps and stretches heavenward. And now, this is what we read. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Ruach, the Spirit of the Lord, shall rest on him. The Ruach, the Spirit, of wisdom and understanding, the Ruach, the spirit of counsel and might, the Ruach of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. 
He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The 11th chapter of the book of Isaiah divides into two parts. In the first part, which I have read, verses 1 through 5, the prophet poet Isaiah is having a vision that shimmers with the memory of the great King David. He had united the northern and the southern kingdoms and had brought about a time of prosperity and well-being. And as that memory shimmers upward, the prophet poet Isaiah also anticipates a new Messiah, a Messiah who will restore the kingdom, the people of God, to peace and to righteousness and faith. And he imagines what that will look like. And so he goes on in the poem that he offers. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the ass, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is a picture of righteousness and faith as it will appear in the world. And it's a, a picture that so captivated the 19th century artist Edward Hicks that he painted this scene called the Peaceable Kingdom more than 80 times across the span of his lifetime. And there are at least two ways on this World Communion Sunday that this scripture lesson from Isaiah chapter 11 calls out to us this vision of the peaceable kingdom. The first call from this passage of scripture to us in our day is a call to repentance, a repentance away from the misuse of self-serving power. Did you notice how Isaiah chose images which so clearly illustrate an unequal balance of power. There is a wolf salivating as he thinks about what his next be meal will be over against the lamb who cowers over to the side hoping not to be noticed. There is the leopard, haughty, strutting. And then there is the kid, deferring, so that it doesn't provide the next meal for the leopard. There is the calf, so vulnerable and meek. Over against the lion who was drooling, licking its lips at how tender and tasty he imagines the calf will be. The cow with its gentle liquid eyes and a bear crouching, ready to pounce. You know, this is the real world. And when I say the real world, I'm not referring only to the forest and the jungle. I'm referring to the world in which we live, the world of our 
workplaces, our governments, yes, even our churches sometimes, and our homes. And you know, sometimes it's easy to see what is going on and the misuse of self-serving power, but sometimes it's easy to miss. It's easy to see when 70 plus million pairs of eyes are trained on TV screens watching a presidential debate. It's not so easy to see, or at least not to acknowledge, when it is sarcastic barbs that chip away at a person's self-worth as they happen where you work or perhaps even at the dinner table in your home. Here, Isaiah names the misuse of power in which we are all involved. And he calls upon us to offer that up, to offer up our hands, our hearts, our voices, these instruments that God designed for us to use to the end of praise, but yet they often become claws and talons of power, self-serving power. And so this passage of scripture calls us first to repentance, and then it calls us to imagination. It is interesting, is it not, in this second half of the passage for today, that it is a child who brings about this reconciliation, a child who is both innocent enough and bold enough to have the courage to move forward and to imagine a different kind of world. And the poet here uh, emphasizes it by mentioning the child three times. A little child shall lead them. A child shall play over the hole of the asp. A child shall place a hand on the adder's den. Carol Gilligan is a researcher, social researcher, author, professor at New York University. And in her research, she reports observing two children at play, a little boy and a little girl. And the little girl says to the boy, let's play next door neighbors. And he said, but I wanna play pirates. And she says, well, you can be the pirate who lives next door. Well, she's imagined a different kind of world. Now, if an adult were to insert him or herself into that picture, we might say, okay, now we'll play pirates for a little while and we'll play next door neighbors for a little while. Because you know, pirates and next door neighbors don't mix. But the little girl was not so well schooled in the ways of adults and the ways of the world. She can imagine a transformed world where a pirate gets transformed into a next door neighbor. And who is to say, perhaps the neighborhood is far more richer and a lot more fun because some pirates live in it. Well, in the passage of scripture, we've read about the little child leading to this transformed world of peace and righteousness and faith. Well, from our vantage point as Christians, of course, we believe that this is accomplished not by just any child, but by one particular child. A child who shared a nursery with calves and lambs. A child who grew up to call lepers and prostitutes, and who's to say, maybe pirates, 
neighbors. A child who through his death and then his resurrection demonstrated for all the world to see that while it may appear that the power is in the hands of particular people, ultimately the power of forgiveness, the power of love is brought about by the one who is the Lamb of God. And it is from this one, this child, the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, that we draw the grace to be able to repent and to imagine the world as God intends it to be. And today, the place where we claim that call to repent and to imagine is here at this table. The table that we share on World Communion Sunday with brothers and sisters across the globe, calling them our neighbors. And we share it too with Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Prince of Peace. Amen. And so, friends, wherever you are in your own homes, come now to the table, remembering that people will come from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, and sit together at this table, the table that our Lord Jesus Christ has prepared for us. And you're invited to come to bring your whole self and to eat and to drink, remembering the love of God that embraces you. Let us pray. It is right and good, O oh God, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. In Jesus Christ, you call us to repent, to imagine, and to change. You send your Holy Spirit to make us and all things new. And so with the whole world and the whole company of heaven, we adore and we praise your glorious name. God of power and mercy, you have promised a time when the snake and the little child will play together and no harm will come to either one. Lord, help all nations and all people to earnestly desire this time. Help us all to give up our ways of fear and greed and hate. And, O oh God, enable your church always to point to the source of peace, light of the world, bread of life, Lion of Judah and the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world, Prince of Peace. Help us to live as Christ lived on earth and to love as he has loved us. This is our prayer and we join our voices together in praying as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Jesus on the night of his arrest took bread and after he had given thanks he broke it he gave it to his friends his disciples and he said this is my body it is for you eat this and as you do remember me and then he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant which is sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins drink this and as you do remember me For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Wherever you are, let us share the feast that Christ has prepared for us. Let us pray. Gracious God, your promises stand unshaken through all generation. Through the meal that we have shared, renew us in hope and faith that we may welcome Christ to rule our thoughts and claim our love. Amen. And now, go in peace. Live as God's own free people. Love and serve the Lord. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.